To get an underwater sand effect, we're going to use fluids to control the behavior of particles. Then to get it to look like sand, we're going to write an expression to control the color of each particle so that at emission it chooses from a list of colors that we define. You can click on this video to see an example of an effect that you could achieve with this technique. Alright, the first thing we're going to need is under dynamics. We're going to need under the uh, fluid effects, we're going to need to create a 3D container with an emitter. And I'm just going to, it's called sand force. And I'm going to have the resolution be 50 and the size in 50. You can scale this to however big your sand particle effect needs to live in. But since we're only using it to drive the behavior of our particles, it doesn't need to be that high of resolution. So, and also um, use the emitter type volume so you can have the fluids emit from a larger area. So first, you can move the emitter down and then the whole container up to be zeroed out a little bit. Then I'm going to scale it up and then squash it just so we have our fluids coming from a larger area. And then Actually, so I'm going to select the container and way at the top, well, not so far at the top, but auto resize. I'm going to turn that on so this runs a little more smoothly. And let's give ourselves a few more frames to work with. Alright, so we got some fluids. Now let's push some particles around with that. I'll create an N particle system. And call it sand emitter. It's a volume. And then we can change everything else later. Scale this up. So we have a little bit of larger area that our sand is going to come with. And when we hit play, Nothing happens, they just fall with gravity. To get them to interact with each other, select your fluid container, then shift select your particles, and under fields, you can use the effect selected option at the bottom. So now when we rewind and hit play, the frame rate's probably really bad. I apologize for that. But now our particles are pushed by the fluid. So, one thing we want to do is to make sure all of our movement is coming 100% from the fluids. We don't want the particles to really have their own um, momentum, I guess. So, in the particle shape tab, under dynamic properties, I'm going to turn their conserve to zero. And what that means is, if these particles don't have a force, like gravity or wind, or in this case the fluids affecting them, they're not going to move. But since they're end particles, we have gravity, and now the fluids are controlling the particles movement only, nothing else. Alright, so it doesn't really look like it's sand, turbulent sand coming out of water. Um, like if you pick something up on a muddy riverbed or something like that so to get your behavior of the fluids now is if you select your container and first I like to go under dynamic simulation and turn our simulation rate scale to 2 that just makes the reaction of the fluids happen in this case twice as fast as they normally would um, so things will happen a little bit faster and then the rest of what we're going to be dealing with is mainly down in content details so content details is right here so actually we're only going to be dealing with density and velocity up here in content method you want to make sure that your dynamic grid is set for density and also on velocity it should be off on the other two so, in density, 
We have buoyancy, which is its tendency to go upwards. It's dissipation is how fast it disappears. Diffusion, how fast it spreads out. And I'm not even going to touch these last three attributes. So I think it's buoyant enough. Maybe we'll just double it. Dissipation, I want it to basically disappear eventually so the sand can fall back down. So I'm going to kind of crank that up. And diffusion, I want it to spread out and push the sand around. So I'm going to just put something like that and we'll see what that does. And what really is going to start it looking like something was pulled out or something moved fast in water and it's pushing sand around is a swirl attribute. That just adds some nice detail to the motion of this stuff. So, and already you can see, you know, it's not perfect, but it's getting there. And you can mess with all of these and these until you get something you like. And also, don't forget, you can add fields. So, a turbulence field or anything you want to help sell the effect. That's how you get fluids to interact with particles. Alright, to get these to start looking like sand, in the example video, I used an expression to have each of the particles choose from a list of browns that I defined at birth randomly. So the reason I did that was so that each particle could match the color of the texture that was they were kind of coming from. So I brought the texture into Photoshop, color picked 10 different browns that I liked and wrote down their RGB values. And then I'll show you how I can bring that information into Maya and control the color of these particles. So first in shading let's turn them to points and then in per particle attributes which is right below shading going to right click on RGBPP and break the connection right click again and write a creation expression. So copying in my list of browns here that I have previously typed up. So RGB, so we use a vector. And then there's a list of 10 ones with different values. There's a link in the description you can click on and download this expression so you don't have to worry about typing it. Um, so, alright, we have our list of browns. So in order to access them we want to put them in an array which is just a list so we want a vector array called colors using the square brackets tells it's an array and that equals anything within this list which again I have previously written out and I'll paste so this is just a list or just this array is a list of these colors. Great, so now to get that to RGB, what we could do right away is just say RGBPP equals color. There's, sorry, yeah, colors. And I don't know, zero. So that would be the first brown A. So if we create that, no, I haven't defined that. There we go. So now our, our color of our particles equals zero, which is the first entry in this array. So if we rewind they're all the same light brown. So what we want to have happen is that each of these particles randomly choose one of these browns. So first we'll need an integer and we'll call it color choice and we're not going to define it yet. 
So we have this will eventually be a number that will represent what I just had before, which was zero. So next we're going to let the expression know how many numbers we have to choose from, which is going to be the size of the array. And luckily there's a command for that. So color choice size equals the return value of size of colors. And that's a back tick up there by the one. So what this is saying is we have a variable that's the return of our array. This just says how many elements are in our array. That's what this variable means now. So now we can define our color choice as a number between 0 and whatever this happens to be. So we want the return value, a random value between 0 and color choice size. And then now we can say our RGBPP equals something from colors, you know, one of the browns, and which one we're going to use color choice. So, quickly, I'm just going to go through this once again because it, it kind of took me a while to get this. So, we defined our list of browns, we put them in an array, and then we query how big that array is, and we use a random number between 0 and however big that array is, in this case 10, and then we use RGBPP from the array list of colors brown and then this is the choice from within that list so I hope that makes sense if it doesn't leave a comment and I'll help you out so now when we rewind and we hit play we have it's subtle but that's the way I wanted it there's ten different browns in there if I show none and then I turn my and particles back on, you can get a better idea of the different browns. And then you can kind of, well, the frame rate's pretty bad, I'm sure, but you can see how you could get underwater sand from this. Um, so, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it or learned anything, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.